Obviously, the main things you'd be likely to consider in terms of your project right now are demonstrating what your problem is, demonstrating there's a need for your um, project, and demonstrating that what you're doing is, is supported by evidence and, and is, is well considered. What's also really important is that you think now about how implementation is going to work um, and demonstrating that you've considered had that foresight around what you're going to need to do to implement a particular project um, and thinking through the, some of the considerations there. Um, I really like the idea of um, Hague Forest response um, being simply just, call, sorry, calling it Hague Forest and putting in some wolves and bears. Um, but obviously there's some implementation considerations with that that probably would mean it perhaps wouldn't work as well as, as, as a design response might. Um, I talked about the master plan um, for Hague Park and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of walk through this as I go through some of the implementation considerations shortly. Uh, but certainly um, one of the considerations is often with any of these sort of public space design is going to be the interaction between different responses and the sorts of actions that, and actors that will be required to um, implement this, those sorts of different responses. Um, and combining that with the things that you might be seeking funding for as part of Public Safety Infrastructure Fund with obviously other sources and other projects. So I'll come back to that shortly. Um, so I just want to, do, want to talk briefly about sort of implementing the response um, and some of the considerations and, and some of the things I think you should try and reflect in, in an application. One of the things we see really common within crime prevention and, and one of the uh, major reasons that crime prevention projects don't work when they don't work is that they're poorly implemented. Not that they're bad ideas, but they're actually not well implemented. Implementation failure is common, not just in crime prevention, in a whole lot of areas, but, but that's actually the main reason that projects don't work. Um, so it's really important that you consider that up front and think about the sorts of things that might stop you from being able to implement a, in a project. So I mentioned, I think I've already covered some of these off um, briefly, but some of the really common pitfalls to avoid in terms of crime prevention are things like um, unanticipated technical difficulties. So not being able to install particular cabling because of some barrier to installing that cabling in, um, in your local area. Um, connectivity issues and, and so on with CCTV. Um, lighting and some of the um, issues around lighting in particular weather, for example. Um, all these sorts of things need to be kind of canvassed and considered by someone who's got far more expertise in the technical requirements for CCTV and the lighting than I do. Um, but certainly having that engaged expertise is really important. Um, not monitoring implementation, so things going off track because they weren't being supervised is also really important. So having kind of that process in place for managing implementation, absolutely vital and important that you have some sort of mechanism for supervising implementation. Um, considered and, and reflected in your application. Uh, I keep coming up, and, uh, sorry, I keep uh, raising the issue of partners not um, working as well together or think actions of other partners not, not necessarily being um, undertaken. Again, another really common um, barrier, which is this idea that um, you kind of rely on someone else to do something and they don't do it. So how are you kind of, um, I guess, mitigating the risk that that will actually occur and, and how are you engaging and working with your partners? Uh, competing priorities, everyone has lots of things to do um, and is always really busy, but making sure that this project doesn't go off track because of uh, other priorities that might be uh, coming into conflict with your timeframes and, and resources. Um, and unanticipated costs, again, something really common and really important to consider, particularly for things like CCTV and lighting and design, which are expensive infrastructure, is what are the potential unanticipated costs that you need to consider? Have you truly considered all of the costs associated with your project? Uh, thinking about project partners, um, it's drawn from UK um, material, but I guess what I'm trying to, to say here is just being, have a really open mind about who you might engage with as part of this project, uh, both in terms of the whole analysing and understanding pr crime problems, but who might be actually involved in a project reference group, who might actually support um, the implementation of your project, um, who you need to engage briefly at the beginning and who you need to engage longer term. So there's lots of different partners to consider and I strongly encourage you to kind of do that you know, scan of, of who could be involved and, and what can they offer um, and you know, what might they want in return for their involvement and, and being really open and upfront about that. And of course remembering that the local community is an absolute vital partner as part of your project. Um, there's some really good evidence around what makes a good partnership and some things to consider. It's a, it's a little bit kind of um, abstract in cases, but, but um, being really clear about why someone's involved in your project as a partner is actually really important. Um, being familiar with one another um, and the risks that pre present might present from working with an unfamiliar partner is also really important. 
um, it's really important to have members who work well together and committed to the partnership um, and who actually have the capacity to commit resources. So again, some good evidence that says we've seen some stuff um, in the, the work we've done in, in some of the local government crime prevention where what happens is you kind of have this devolution of responsibility to people who can't actually commit the resources that an organisation had originally committed to, to provide and, and that's something to, to obviously weigh, um, weigh up when you're engaging with other partner agencies. Um, continuity in partner representation, you can't necessarily do much about people leaving positions and staff turnover and so on, but certainly that's something that people can come up against and having a contingency in place for any potential turnover that might occur throughout the life of the project is something to factor in. Um, and also related to that is being adequately resourced and the ability to continue to share resources. So will your partner be resourced to participate in a project for the duration of that project, I guess is the, the main important point. Um, and particularly if they're providing funding to support the infrastructure, will they actually be able to provide that funding? Um, and if there's any sort of information sharing, being really clear about what the protocols are around who can share what information and, and what that looks like is also really important in terms of good partnership work. I mentioned the significance of community engagement and I really can't emphasise this enough. Um, there are different levels of community engagement, but we know that the more you can engage with the community around something that's so present in a community, with these sort of public safety infrastructure projects, it's really visible. If you have a community that's not engaged and not supportive, you are not going to get the reaction you want, particularly if you're trying to address concern about crime and safety. Um, and some of the best examples I know that have been funded already by the Department of Justice around public safety infrastructure are those that have actually actively engaged the community from the beginning and maintained that engagement throughout. And I'll talk about one of those briefly shortly. Um, in terms of level of engagement, it can be as simple as providing information to the community about what you're doing. Um, obviously in terms of the planned infrastructure, um, obviously and, and being open about what's going on as you're, as you're doing it. Um, typically you're not seeking anything back from them but providing information. There may be certain sectors of the community where that's appropriate. C consultation around, particularly around problem solving um, and the response, that's really useful and important and valuable and something you may wish to demonstrate in an application is have you consulted with the community around what the problem actually is uh, and what they think should be done and if they have a really crazy idea, have you got a plan for how you're going to negotiate and manage that with them because that's, that's a risk for obviously the perceived effectiveness of something. Um, and finally, and I, I mentioned this is kind of being the, the, you know, the ultimate goal, which is actually active participation, where you've got the community engaged from the very beginning, or some representatives from your community, and you maintain their involvement and active participation in the project for, throughout. Um, and that can be through a number of different mechanisms, but it is something that's really valuable and useful. Um, some general tips from what we've seen in terms of community engagement within crime prevention, um, generally, not specifically to these sorts of projects, but but you know, what, do we need, what have we learnt from our experience in engaging with the community? One is being prepared, um, actually going out and having really clear questions if you're seeking information, um, being prepared about what you're telling them about what you're doing um, or what you're planning on doing, um, and just general level of preparation in terms of your engagement. Um, being inclusive, so thinking about the broad range of community members who might be impacted by a particular project and making sure that you're inclusive with the full range as best as possible, um, either through representation or um, seeking more active engagement, so um, uh, focused engagement with particular groups, particularly vulnerable groups, groups who are particularly concerned about safety in an area or particularly affected by safety um, issues and, and crime problems. Uh, being focused, I think one of the real limitations around the work that's been done around Hague Park to date is the lack of focus around um, what would the community engagement was all about, what information was being sought from the community in terms of uh, what to be done. Um, and that came up, meant there were some really vague ideas and concerns raised around safety that really need to be explored and unpacked further. Being transparent is really important. Um, not taking information from the community and not giving anything back about what you're doing with it um, and not being open about what's happening in public space when they're going to find out eventually. Um, it's really important to be transparent about what you're doing and the decisions you're making. And being balanced. Um, so you, you obviously want to talk to people about their concerns about safety, but you don't want to raise concerns about safety. You don't want to um, make them feel less safe because suddenly there's, they, they, they didn't know anything was going on, but now suddenly they know all about these crime problems. So it's about being balanced in how you present information to the community um, and how you kind of manage that whole dysfunctional versus functional fear. This is a fantastic example. I only really have time to, to canvas one, one example um, from the projects that have been funded. This is the Jewel of Brunswick. I don't know if there's anyone from this council here. No? 
Oh, no, that's a shame. Um, but this is a, a really nice example of a, a public safety infrastructure project that was funded by the department, I think, two or three years ago now, uh, where a, a road was closed and, uh, and was uh, construction to create a sort of vibrant public public space. Um, there are a few things that were really, I think, really important about this particular project which are really valuable lessons. Uh, one is about creating a public space that has multiple uses, um, that appeals to multiple users. So people who might necessarily want to use a climbing wall, not everyone's going to want to use a climbing wall, um, but it was about creating a space that was could be used by multiple users at different times. The consideration of day and nighttime use. So um, I don't have a nighttime photo, but the, the, the area is very well lit um, and it's been um, created for both nighttime and daytime use. Um, but more important than anything else was the level of community consultation that went in with this particular project. So right from the very get go, the, the idea of closing this particular intersection was well supported by the community. There was a lot of engagement in terms of understanding what to do, why they were doing it. Um, there was a lot of engagement throughout with lots of different events as the project uh, was unveiled and was, was undertaken um, and also right through to um, the evaluation of the project. Um, but that community engagement was really clear and there's a really nice evaluation report on the department's website which I'd encourage you to have a look at. Uh, it's Jewel of Brunswick, you guys probably can't know the specific name of the project, um, but corner of the one on the corner of Wilson and Sydney Road. Um, but what was also really important, of course, is the fact that it was evaluated um, and there's some evidence of benefit uh, from this project. So they were able to demonstrate what they'd learnt in terms of the impact of the project, but actually also really important from that evaluation is identifying things that they could do better or do differently or do, do next. Um, and that's the other really valuable part of evaluation. So, um, But the, 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 the really important lesson, I think, from this particular project was that whole community engagement throughout. Um, and I think there's some really valuable lessons there for Hague, Hague Park in terms of some of the engagement. Um, I'm not going to go into those just right now because I'm conscious of time. Um, I just want to end by briefly talking about evaluation. Um, we don't have a lot of uh, time in this particular session to talk about evaluation, but Fiona has already raised a really good point, which is that you should absolutely be demonstrating you're thinking about evaluation now, and that will very much strengthen your application. Evaluation is a really important process generally. Um, it's not just about demonstrating the impact of your work for um, um, for kind of the, the, the sake of it and kind of getting included in one of these reviews that I keep talking about. Evaluation is important in terms of lesson learning. It's important in terms of demonstrating um, or supporting future applications for funding. Um, but it's also a really valuable learning process. And evaluation is not a one-off activity, but it's a, a kind of an ongoing process throughout of lesson learning and really trying to integrate those lessons into the work that you're doing. Uh, fortunately, um, there is a fantastic toolkit and resource available to you specifically for public safety infrastructure that's been conveniently uploaded to the department's website. Um, strongly encourage you to look at this, um, not just because I wrote it, but um, that's, a, that's a really good reason in itself. Um, but it is a, it is, um, it's a guide that I would strongly encourage you to look at now. Um, and it's a guide and there's a toolkit as well, so there's lots of resources available to you to support your evaluation work. Um, but it's very specific to public safety infrastructure. So uh, if you haven't seen it already, I would encourage you to look at it. And it looks at things around recorded crime and interpreting and understanding recorded crime, uh, community safety uh, and perceptions of safety, uh, and right through to reporting and evaluation. Um, and there's a number of, as I said, resources to support it. Really briefly, just a couple of tips in terms of an application and around evaluation. Uh, the first is about planning evaluation early. Um, get in now, understand what you're doing in terms of evaluation now and demonstrate that you're prepared to do an evaluation. Um, again, you obviously have that fantastic resource that is CSA data. Um, that's obviously a, an excellent baseline measure, but obviously think about kind of the full range of evaluation activities that you might need to undertake because you don't want to get to the end of the two years and go, I've got to evaluate and then you've got to do it all retrospectively. Bad idea. Being really realistic about the aims and objectives of your project, so don't set yourself up to fail by saying you're going to achieve all these wonderful things that simply aren't realistic in the context of what you're doing. Um, you're going to need to demonstrate your aims of your project as part of your application, so be realistic with that because that's what you're going to be measured against. Um, developing a logic model, some really good guidance and there's a, some resources specific to CCTV and lighting um, in the uh, toolkit, in the evaluation toolkit, but developing a logic model that demonstrates you've considered how your project works and how you get from what you're doing to the impact you're expecting. Um, and so I strongly encourage you, if you, not necessarily as part of your application, but certainly early in the um, project to be developing a logic model that articulates how you're getting from A to B. 
Uh, baseline measurement, already talked about, as I said, CSA. If you're running a community survey, think about how you might repeat that uh, for the purpose of evaluation. If you're doing any observational data, think about how you might collect that in a way that can be repeated um, objectively and systematically over time. Um, but certainly think about what your baseline is. What are you going to compare against in one or two years when your project is finished in terms of the impact of what you've done? Um, and finally, building evaluation into your proposal and project plan. The idea that evaluation is an actually a really important project manage management activity and it does require resourcing and it does require um, some level of time and investment by you. Uh, and certainly building that into your overall proposal is, is certainly really important. So I would encourage you to do that. So if I could just end, I think I'm, I'm right on time. One minute over. Um, I'll just end with a few final comments and kind of takeaway messages. Um, hopefully I've given you something that will be useful, um, something that's hopefully a little bit interesting, um, but certainly um, if there's some material that you can take away and use in your application, I, I, I'm, I'm, I hope you, you do find that useful. Um, the first thing I want to make the point is that absolutely what you're doing here can reduce crime, um, but it needs to be really well planned and really well designed. But the important thing here is I, I think the work is fantastic and I think the ideas that will come out of the councils um, will be really um, valuable and useful in terms of reducing crime, but just please try and consider some of those things in terms of getting the, the biggest bang for your buck in terms of projects. Interventions. Uh, obviously, I keep harping on about this, but re being really clear that you understand the problem before you decide what you're doing. Make sure you demonstrate that depth of understanding in your application that shows you're thinking about what's driving the problem, not just what the problem is, but what's causing it. Make evidence-informed decisions. Draw on that evidence base. It's obviously, in this slide, I've given you some resources to draw upon. But obviously, don't over oh, I said theory. Um, don't overlook theory and context. Don't, don't overlook how your project is supposed to work and the context in which you're implementing it. Don't be so wedded to evidence that you ignore those things. Um, so you know, there's um, some really important questions you need to work through mm -hmm. and answer. Uh, but try, and absolutely the best you can, to draw upon that evidence to support your application. Don't underestimate implementation. Think about it now, plan for it now, and demonstrate that you're thinking about it now. Um, and finally, plan for your evaluation as you're developing your project. Plan now, um, because you'll get a much better quality evaluation and much more useful, not just because other people want to read it, but useful for your own organisation in terms of evaluation. So certainly try and do that as soon as possible as part of your development um, process.